Good morning and welcome to Life Church Centre. It's great to have you join us today for our online Sunday worship. Now coming up today we have a time of worship where we're going to sing together, we're going to have a communion and also we're going to have a time of listening to God's word. So with communion coming up shortly, if you haven't already got some bread and juice uh, ready, it might be worth going and getting that now. We're going to start by singing this song Guardian and it's just the words of this song are just so relevant for us today. Uh, with the week that we've had and settling into this new lockdown and I'm not quite sure how you're feeling all about it but uh, we can go with these words into this next week it says that uh, God goes before us he's there beside us and uh, it says goodness and mercy will always follow and then it says in the second verse I will walk by faith and not by sight that's something we're having to do right now um, so we've just got to put our trust in God in this current situation that we find ourselves in and he will walk with us through it so let's just worship together with this first song
shall sing of your strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my distress. Let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. And may you shelter them, that those who love your name may exult in you. And I will sing of your loving kindness of the Lord forever. To all generations, I will make known your faithfulness with my mouth. Heavenly Father, thank you for your relentless and reliable love. No matter how I feel, you are constant and kind. Thank you that you are the giver of every good thing and that your forgiveness and mercy are accessible to me. No matter what I have done and left undone, you are good and kind and I receive your love and praise you for who you are. I bless your name and ask you to draw me close so that I may know you more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say 
worship the Lord. The scripture tells us so clearly that the worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Such the Father seeketh those to worship him. It is always such a privilege. And we have much to worship him for because of him giving his life on Calvary for our redemption and our salvation. And so let's just take this moment now to partake of communion which is a, a wonderful privilege. It's very simple elements that are used, but they speak so profoundly of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. I'd just like to read the scriptures uh, just from the Gospels this time, uh, really from the 22nd chapter of Luke, picking it up at verse 14. It reads like this. When the hours come, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's just do that, shall we? Let us just take a bread, just very simple bread that it may be. But this speaks of Christ who is said, I am the bread of life. And thank God he's the one that gave us eternal life. His broke, broken body and was lacerated for us. So as he broke bread, like he did with the disciples all those years ago, let us partake of that bread in identification and identity of he who gave his life for us and his body and the suffering that he took and the lacerations and the cruelty and the ridicule that he took. It was for us. Let's do that, shall we? Let us now continue. Verse 20 it says, In the same way after supper he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed. And of course it was spoken of in the Old Testament of this that would take place, prophesied all those years before. So let's take of the cup and the juice that we have, just, just symbolic of his blood that was shared and outpoured for you and I. Let's partake it and just say thank you Lord that your blood was shed for me and for my redemption. Let's pray. Father, we thank you the scripture says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And Lord Jesus, your body was broken and lacerated on our behalf. And your blood was shed that we may be forgiven, brought back and redeemed and brought back into that place of fellowship and oneness with yourself. And we thank you yet again, Lord, for that. We're just remembering, yes, in the, maybe in the comfort of our homes, but Lord, our fellowship is with you, and that is what is important. And Lord, we just partake of this 
simply this morning these very simple elements that they may be but speak so profoundly of the salvation that he has provided that you have provided for us so we give you thanks lord in jesus name amen So praise God for the wonderful salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Now let's just sit back and listen to the word of God that Brother Ken will bring to us uh, this morning regarding the word of God, which is profound also, that strengthens us, that feeds our life and our soul uh, and our very be being. We thank God for it. And so let's just uh, drink in what God's word says to us today. God bless you. Well, good day everybody, and God bless you. I'd like to welcome you here today to our online service. Um, whether you're a, a member of New Life Church or whether you've just tuned into this and found us and are listening to what we have to say this morning, and just say we're all welcome and God bless you. And I'd like to share a few thoughts with you this morning, or today rather, and... Um, just share one with another what the Lord has for us today that he leads and guides by his Holy Spirit. I'd like to take a text from uh, 2nd of Corinthians and chapter 5 and just using one verse, very short verse, verse 7 and it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Repeat that again. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And this came about really with what has happened recently with us going into lockdown yet again and uh, the COVID, the epidemic seems to be getting so much worse and the uh, problems that people are having with this, we've outlined them in the past, but it seems as though we're here again. And someone, as, as I sat by my, looking at my television screen, waiting for the Prime Minister to tell us what we already know, that we was going into lockdown yet again, somebody texted me and said, here we go again. And I was thinking about that, about how we look at, at things and how we are led by the media and by social media in, into their way of thinking and the normal and natural way of thinking. But we as Christian people very much live our life by this text. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. In the NIV version, it says that we live by faith and not by sight, which might make it that little bit clearer. Clearer, We live by faith and not by sight. If we take the latter part, then, of that which um, we have read, we see that we, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. It is not by sight that... I'm just sort of talking about first, that we live our lives by what we are told, um, what the media tells us, and we look with our natural thinking and our natural thoughts uh, at what is happening around us. And that can be very depressing and bring us very much down at such a time as this, when this is going on in our society, uh, and when we're all affected by this, we've outlined in, in sermons gone by all the problems that come along with, with COVID. And we see that we're heard again in this position. And it, it is very hard not to get drawn into looking at this and the depressing side of this and that which would bring us down and, and even cause us mental anguish and, and to be very very much upset in this position but you know the christian person is in a different position because of what the lord has done for us and has given to us this text is taken from a passage of scripture when paul 
is outlying, outlying the, um, the, the, what is going to happen in the future about, the, about being in heaven and saying that this body that we now live in is just really a tent. It's just uh, for a short time that we dwell within this body and that we have the great promise and wonderful promise of eternity. And in the verse 5 of this, as he outlines this, that it, it is good to be in that position, he, sa he says that now he, that's the Lord, now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has also given us the Spirit as a guarantee. And as a Christian person, we do have that Spirit dwelling within. The Spirit come to dwell within us when we accepted our salvation. And so we have that as a guarantee of these things, but also a guarantee that we can live a life of faith, not facing problems, not facing life as other people do, as we once used to, but now very much we live our life by faith and over the past few weeks as we've talked about hope uh, the hope that we have the hope of peace the hope of joy the hope of a future very much we've outlined uh, promises of God from his word and in, in every sermon that you get you get people bring you promises of God and we know these promises off by heart you know um, we, we, what the Lord has said to us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us that he's the same unchanging God same yesterday today and, and forever and whatever we are going through um, he said well we're going through the fire or the water whatever it is that we're going through he's there and will be there with us through these situations we have all these wonderful promises but you know there comes a time in life when we have to actually stand on these promises not just know about these promises not them, not know them off by heart or with head knowledge that what the what these words say but actually put these in, into operation in our life at perhaps such a time as this when we could uh, walk as it were or live our life by what we see going on around us and what our natural thinking is towards this and be very much brought down by this but there comes a time as i said when we need to put these promises and stand upon these promises put them into action coming against that which would sort sort to bring us down and when, when, we, when we think of these promises, we have to think that we, we accept these by faith. Preacher once said, and I always remember this, we'll all have bags of faith until we need it. And it is sometimes when we actually need that faith and need to put that faith in operation that we find our faith may be somewhat lacking. But you know, the word this morning is to encourage us to stand on these promises of God, to let our faith grow, to let the Lord grow faith within us if we feel that we have a lack of faith and to be looking to the Lord Jesus, to look to the promises that he has made, to apply them to such a time as this that we are now living in. And it is when we start to take our eyes off the Lord and look to the natural that we can be brought down and be in a state of depression, mental anguish, whatever. You know, we, we all know a, a very well-known account of Peter when he walked on the water uh, and the Lord appeared to them walking on the water uh, and Peter uh, and, and he said to put them at their ease uh, he said be of good cheer it is I do not be afraid 
And this is uh, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 28. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they had got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those that were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And so the point there is very obvious. When, Jesus, when Peter looked to Jesus, he walked on the water. When he looked around at the natural, uh, and when he looked at the wind and the boisterous waves, it was then that he began to sink and I think without spending much more time on this, that is a great, one of the best examples we have of when we look to Jesus, we walk. Uh, but when we look away, that is when we begin to sink or begin to fall. And so with that example there then, we come back to ourselves and standing and living on these promises of God. Having said that, that what we should do, that we walk by faith, it is not always easy to do. Sometimes we do have a lack of faith and we do question God. We have another example in Mark's Gospel, and chapter 9, of a man that brought his son to Jesus uh, because the son was possessed of a, a dumb spirit which from time to time would come upon him and cause him to uh, froth at the mouth and to, to, be, and, and to fall into the fire and, and into water and, and the various things that came about with this. He asked the disciples if they could heal him and they were unable to do so. So this man was in a state of... His faith was not at the very high level. He was a little bit desperate. He was a little bit, uh, as we might say, with great doubt and dread and fear of what would happen with his son. And then he came to Jesus and explained about the boy, explained about what had happened with the disciples. And Jesus said to him in verse 23 of, uh, of chapter 9 of Mark, he said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Now, there's a bit of a contradiction there in terms, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. But we can understand that and probably very much identify with that uh, in, in our life. Uh, probably at such a time uh, as this yes we believe but we may be asking where are you lord in this you know my faith is not at a high level and we have belief but we also have doubt and what we want to do this day is to dispel those doubts that our faith might grow because that is what the Lord by his Holy Spirit can do for us. He can let cause faith to grow within us when we stand upon his promises and because of the Holy Spirit that we have within. We need to recognise then that we are in a battle and that we need a victory from that battle. We need a victory of faith. We have a scripture in 1 John 5 and 4 which reads, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. By our faith, by living our life in faith, we can overcome the world and all that it would throw against us. 
And to have a victory, you have to have a battle. And indeed, we might say we are in such a battle at a time like this. We are in a battle, but we can have the victory, even our faith. And a battle goes on for our mind, whether there is COVID or whether there isn't. The enemy of our soul would seek, seek to bring doubt and fear into our minds, at, at, um, particularly when something like this happens, very much would seek to bring us, to bring us down for our, our faith uh, to grow, uh, to, to, to diminish rather, and for us to grow weary with all that is going on uh, around us. So, you know, we can come against him. We can rebuke him in these doubts that he would put within our mind. If we look, if we walk, um, as, as it were, not in faith, but by sight, then we do find that we allow the enemy to come in uh, and to sow seeds of doubt in our mind. For we walk by faith, and not by sight. But it is so easy, it is the natural, to walk by faith, by sight and to live by sight. And the enemy would cease, seek to take us and to um, get our minds and have control of our minds. But we can come against him. We can rebuke him. Proverbs 18 and 10 says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The name of the Lord, it is like a strong tower. It is like a place of safety. We can rebuke the enemy and move into a place of safety. Move our mind into a place, a safe place where we depend upon the promises of God and exercise faith in this area. So we come against the enemy, we rebuke the enemy and we allow the Holy Spirit within to grow our faith that we might stand on the promises of God and be victorious in the battle that we are going through. So these promises are the word of God. They're not my words, they're not the word of man, they are the word of God. And that endures forever. Come what we may, whatever life might throw against us, those promises do not alter. Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will by no means pass away, says the Lord. His word is steadfast. His word is sure. You know, the, the Lord will meet you right where you are right now. And w whether your faith level is high or not, the Lord is not there to put you down, to punish you. He wants you to stand upon his promises. He understands you. He understands you as an individual. And you know, it's sometimes very easy little things that can bring us close to God. Something with myself that's been working for me just lately is just thanking God for the simple things in life. The old hymn writer said, Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And recently, what has helped my faith to grow? What has brought me into a, a greater relationship with God is just to relax and to thank God for the simple things. Not get down on my knees, but sometimes just go to the window, look out, see the beauty of God, look at a tree and thank God for his creation. Look at the grass and the plants and thank God for his creation. Thank him for the day that you have. 
Thank him for the air that you breathe. Thank him for your health and, and strength. Thank him for every little thing, you know, the love of family and friends around you. Thank the Lord for that. You might have a pet that is faithful to you. Thank the Lord for that. It's just something that has worked for me to thank God for the simple things. You might say, you've got that the wrong way around. You should be thanking God for your salvation. You should be thanking God for all that he's done for you. You start thanking God for the simple things. You very, very quickly get to thank God for his salvation, for his forgiveness, for his understanding of you in maybe your weak times or your weakness. You know, you very quickly get to thank God for all that he's and has done for you. That is something that works for me. What works for you? I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that that is what works for me. And, you know, you need to meet with God, to come close to him, to allow him to show you, to grow faith within you. God will meet you right where you are. The Lord will meet you, whatever your position. When Peter was there, when he was sinking, the Lord lifted him up. He said, oh, you of little faith. But I don't believe that that was done with a great rebuke. It was just that his faith might grow, that he might look back at that and think, you know, I did once walk on the water. Yes, I sunk, but I walked on the water and the Lord lifted him up. It showed him what was possible. And when we look at Peter's, Peter's future life, we see that that might be a lesson that he learnt there. It was something that he could take with him, where he could express faith in the Lord. It says in Romans 10, 17, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing the word of God. Looking to the word of God. Not looking to the media, not looking upon social media for people's opinions or what have you. Not standing upon man's opinions and what man thinks, but standing on that which God has for us. And Hebrews 12 and 2, our final scripture, says about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He will cause our faith to grow if we look to him. Give him that chance. Find out what works for you with the Lord. You know, back to basics is uh, a sign of many years ago, but sometimes it is good to do that, to just get back to the simple things and the simple things of the gospel. Don't make it hard. You know, when I say about, about thanking God for the simple things, just do it in your own time. Just relax into thanking God. Don't think of a great list and you've got to do it and, uh, you know, it puts you under pressure. Just relax and thank God. Let him speak to you. You know, be still, it says, it, it, the, the word says, be still and know that I am God. Um, and we need to do that to sometimes just stop, to relax and let the Lord speak into us our hearts and into our lives, that our faith might grow, that we might live then by faith and not by sight. I've come to the end of what I want to say. I just trust that this has been a blessing and a help to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you are to us, we thank you for your word and your Holy Spirit, which leads and guides us. Lord, at such a time as this, Lord, we just pray that we'll very much stand upon those promises that, Lord, you made to us, that fill us, Lord, with courage, with strength, 
Lord, we pray that we will depend upon these and not upon ourselves and not upon the things that we see going on around us. Lord, we indeed thank you for your love and everything that you do for us and that you are to us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these things. Amen. God, God bless you. Have a good day. Have a good week. Walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. Well, we thank God for the word of God to us this morning. We thank God that it feeds our souls and feeds our life and if we live accordingly to it, we'll know God's blessing in our lives. But before we can conclude uh, this uh, service, let's just pray. We're in a situation now with another lockdown situation. Uh, infection rates are rising and things are looking very serious within our nation. So let's just pray for those that are facing this head on on the front lines, as we might say. Let's just pray for them as we conclude this uh, service, shall we? Father, we come in Jesus' name. Uh, Lord, we see the current situation within our nation, which is worsened with this pandemic. And Lord, we pray for our frontline workers particularly, particularly those of the medical staff, those that are facing this head on, face to face each day. Uh, yes, in, endangering, really infecting their own lives. We pray for success in all they're seeking to do and the help and care that they're trying to bring. We commit them to you, Lord. We pray, and uh, Lord, for all those other frontline workers that are operating in other areas to make uh, things possible uh, that can so things can continue. Lord, we just commit them to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just thank you for the vaccine that has uh, become available. We pray for the success of this, Lord, as it is rolled out throughout our nation. We just pray that, Lord, uh, 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 that it will be uh, that that is expected to be, to, to, to beat this uh, pandemic and to bring this virus under control. We just pray that the cease, for the cessation of this and, and, Lord, for it to the infection rate to come down within our nation. So, Lord, we commit these people to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for a hedge of protection around your people, for each and every one of us, that we might use our wisdom in all our comings and our goings. And, Lord, we just commit our nation and our leaders of our nation to you. Give them wisdom, Lord. We do not wish to be critical of them, but, Lord, they are trying to work their way through a very new and different situation. So, Lord, give them wisdom in all that they're seeking to do on our behalf. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, as we continue this week, cause us to be a blessing to others. We ask it in thine name's sake. Amen. Well, praise God for a time we can have uh, like this, just sharing together and partaking of the Lord's table uh, as well. And uh, just remembering what he has done. In the words of an old hymn, redeemed, now I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. So let's share that with someone this week as we go about our daily duty. Let's be a blessing to someone else. God bless you and have a great day.